Hey, I'm Louis Cole, a filmmaker and online content creator. I've been documenting my travels and adventures for the last nine years, but have recently focused my energies into launching the Social Good Club to support an online community of creators to collaborate with experts and to activate our audiences for social impact. We see this time as a huge opportunity for a better future for everyone. And we can start now by imagining the possibilities of what we can shape together. Today, we are hosting a conversation with future visionary serial tech entrepreneur, Peter Diamandis, one of the early pioneers and wildly successful YouTubers and tech enthusiasts, Justine Zarek, and youth climate activist, Anjali Mitra, chatting about how we can start this process of imagining a new normal for our lives. Right, <laughs> should we get rolling? I feel yeah, like yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Cool, okay. Um, Cool. Welcome, everyone. Today, we are partnering up with Earth Day Live, and we are going to have a conversation around activating the new normals in our own lives. Uh, I'd love just to hear your name, how you would describe yourself, and then maybe something you're currently up to. And it doesn't have to be something big and flashy. It could literally just be, I'm binging all of my favorite Netflix shows. So yeah, do you want to go around, Justine? Sure. I'm Justine. I go by iJustine Online and I've had a YouTube channel since 2006. So I've been doing this for a very long time. So I've seen a lot of things, kind of the ups and downs in this industry. But I think right now for me, I'm realizing that a lot of kids don't have access to the technology to continue their schooling now that they're at home because they go to school, they have the tech there and everything's available. So now that they have to do homeschooling, they don't have this available to them. So I'm kind of trying to identify the pockets of places where these children are and where the families are and how to partner with companies to kind of pull together and get these kids the resources so that they can continue their education. But I'm also playing a lot of Animal Crossing on Nintendo Switch. So, you know, those two things combined. Hello, my name is Anjali. I'm currently calling in from around Boston, Massachusetts. I am a youth climate activist um, with the Sunrise Movement and also the Boston Climate Strike. Um, in terms of what I have been doing during quarantine, um, I am a, currently a high school senior and have been doing schoolwork, um, but I've also been doing a lot of drawing and also um, obviously activism as well as some yoga, which is nice. I'll pass it to Peter. Hey, thank you, Anjali. First of all, I, I have worked out more, meditated more and slept more during quarantine than ever before. I have two nine-year-old boys and we've been playing more baseball than ever before. So those two things are awesome. Uh, I am on fire and I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, started some 22 companies. Uh, in the last 60 days, one of the companies I co-founded is on par and ready to be the largest vaccine manufacturer on the planet for uh, this coronavirus um, in particular and most accurate blood antibody test called COVAX, C-O-V-A-X-X, -X, and it's amazing. And then uh, I have another company that is just skyrocketing during this pandemic called Future Loop, and it's an AI and machine learning algorithm that sources all the good news in the world and delivers it to you on the coronavirus and all the tech that's changing that and on other topics. So it's just a lot going on, and it's, uh, it's been pretty amazing. And then just quickly, how are people feeling right now? I mean, Peter, you said you're, you're feeling great. This has actually been a good time for you. Um, I personally have had a bit of a roller coaster. I've struggled to sleep some nights, depending. Um, even though I am a positive person, I feel like there's a sense for me of uncertainty and confusion around the future, um, which, which I guess there always is, but um, it's particularly right now. And despite that, though, I do feel hopeful and yeah, it's just been up and down for me. I don't know about you girls. Yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster because it's like I've tried, I've spent so long to kind of get out of that introvert bubble that I'm in mm -hmm. and finally finding sports and all kinds of things like that. And for me, jujitsu was the outlet that I found two years ago that really helped me kind of break out of my comfort zone and, you know, just get that mental clarity and everything that that sport brings. And now that I don't have that, it's been really hard because that was something that I kind of, escaped to. Yeah, I think I have been alternating uh, fairly constantly between anxiety and complete contentment. Um, I love, you know, being with my family, being um, 
in like my neighborhood um, and indoors. Um, but also, obviously, there's a lot happening in the world right now. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I think, uh, Louis, you know, I, I wrote a blog about a week ago um, on my com website, in which I said and gave the reasons why I'm actually extremely hopeful and I'm even optimistic for a range of reasons and happy to go into that. But, um, you know, understanding the fact that a lot of people are having hardships, have lost their jobs, have been on ventilators, have been ill and so forth. Even despite that, there are a number of good reasons to be uh, hopeful and optimistic. I've never felt more connected to the planet than now, right? This is the first time ever in human history that the entire human race has had a singular enemy, right? It's always been fractionated and you're wrong or you're wrong, but you know, nearly 8 billion people are all focused on how do we solve this problem? And by my estimate, Louis, somewhere between 100 million and 200 million Physicians and nurses and scientists and engineers and technologists are all taking aim at solving this. And we're going to crush it and come out of it stronger. So we're not surprised like this again. Yeah. Yeah, And it's interesting because it's like we all feel so isolated, yet I feel like we've never been more united because every single person is going through the same thing. Like I, I have a dog, so I'm out walking him. And I'm just waving to my neighbors like from afar. And I feel even more connected to them now than ever. I've lived here for so many years and I don't know a single one of my neighbors, which is crazy. So now I'm kind of actively trying to get to know them from afar, asking them if they need anything. Do you guys need some toilet paper? Do you need a studio <laughs> light? Because I know one of the guys is a producer. So I'm like, hey, I have gear if you need to shoot anything from home. So I think it's just reaching out to the nearest people around you and asking if anybody needs anything is such a simple act. But if everyone does that, that small act can help, I think, in so many ways. I think this is the first time that I personally have seen an overwhelming majority of the people in my community really recognize that there are certain systems in the United States that aren't working for all people and systems that people thought were invincible are beginning to fall. And at the same time, people are investing in their communities. I know that there are some neighbors of mine who have sewing machines and are making masks for people and people are buying groceries for others. And there's this huge investment in like our neighbors and our communities that is something that I personally haven't ever seen before. Um, and it's really inspiring to see. Beautiful. And I guess for you too, because since you are in high school, like how are your friends dealing with this? Because obviously, I mean, we're all a little bit older, so it's kind of like we're coming at this as adults, but I feel like for people that are just kind of still in school, like how is that affecting you guys? Um, I think I'm still grappling with the fact that I have to make a college decision without looking at colleges. Huh. Um, I think there is a certain amount of isolation. You're all doing your schoolwork at home, in your rooms. Uh, but there's also, uh, you get to really see a different side of your classmates. And for me, it's really valuable because um, sometimes, especially with teachers, um, a lot of students are like, oh, this person teaches and that is their sole purpose in life. Um, and then being able to see them at home and, you know, or in their backyards and, and really see them as human beings. Um, it's a very valuable thing, I think. I'd love to just ask, you know, how do you think we can proactively in our own lives in our own communities really start seeing a shift in how we come out of this and what does the future look like so i'd love for us to imagine for a bit and just throw throw out some thoughts i'm happy to go i spend a lot of time mm. thinking about this louis and, and writing about this and yeah um first of all uh, when I'm talking to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and, and CEOs out there, I coach about 5,000 entrepreneurs and, and people talk about on TV returning to work. Well, guess what? We're at work now. This is mm -hmm. the new normal for work for a lot of people. And uh, so one of the questions is, are we really going to go back to the office? Do we really need to go back to the office? I'm finding myself and my entire team is finding themselves far more productive doing a daily Zoom tag up and working from home on Slack. And so if we're traveling less, right, less airplanes in the sky, more, less cars on the, on the ground, um, people being able to be
be in their home environment with their families and so forth. Maybe that's more psychologically and environmentally healthy. I think we're going to totally reinvent um, healthcare uh, in the home. I'm, I'm doing a future loop poll right now. So I do a prediction challenge every, every week, a different prediction challenge. And the one right now is five years from now, we're going to have in-home healthcare. Is it going to be from Amazon, Google, Apple, the government, an existing, um, existing tech player, or a new startup we never heard of? And the results on the poll is amazing. I won't, I won't spoil them. I'm such a huge fan of home health tech. And even going through all this, I was kind of going through like my inventory of like, what is the stuff that I use that I've never actually reviewed? So I love like just blood pressure monitors that can connect to apps, scales, uh, a blood oxygen level, and obviously like the, the Apple watch. I mean, if anything is ever out of whack, if I know that like not too long ago, I was like, my heart rate has been very low. Like what's is there something wrong? So knowing what that normal is for yourself is so important. Mm -hmm. And now people need to know what their temperature is. My temperature tends to run a little bit higher. So if I were to go to a doctor and say, hey, my temperature has been like 99, I, I think I have a high grade fever or low grade fever, but I don't because that's sort of my normal. So knowing those simple things about yourself is so important. So I love the, that whole aspect of, of home health care. I think currently, obviously, um, humans are not traveling as much and people aren't out and about. They're not consuming as many fossil fuels and you can see the impacts to the planet as we speak. Um, and it really shows like the resiliency of our environment uh, in terms of, you know, what happens when humans take a break. Um, and I think that at some point, you know, things are going to start getting back to normal. But if we remember that we don't have to do everything all the time. We don't have to travel all the time. And we've already seen the impacts that has on the planet. Um, I think that there's a lot of like potential there um, for people to utilize that to really understand that like what we're doing or what we have been doing before coronavirus is not necessarily the way that we have to operate as a society um, in terms of, you know, you might not need to go to the grocery store like five times a week. Um, it's, it's much more of a time right now where people are really understanding like that they can get what they need um, instead of just taking more and more and more um, from each other, from the planet. Um, and also I think in, within our own communities, um, I know that a lot of us have, like people in my neighborhood have started gardening and like doing things related to just being outside. Um, because for many people currently, that's offering an escape to the world that we're currently living in. Um, and I think just that moment of appreciating the outdoors that a lot of people are rediscovering, um, if we kind of keep that uh, and keep that momentum going, uh, coming out of this, I think it has a lot of potential as well. Yeah. And I think we're also, you know, during after every economic crisis, one of the things that occurs is there's an ex a, a blossoming of new technologies, right? So out of the 2008 um, financial crisis came WhatsApp and Venmo and Uber and Airbnb. And there's, I'm sure, hundreds of companies and startups working on reinventing teleconferencing and telepresence and next generation versions of Zoom that will be so much better and in the VR world and the AR world coming that will you'll think twice you know do I really want to drive across town or you know I'm famous for hopping on an airplane to fly to Dubai for a meeting and hopping on a plane and coming back and which is insanity and it's like that's the last time I've ever done that so you know can we is there the ability to, to do less impact on the planet and your body um, and and have achieved 99% of the objectives like this. You know, Anjali, you know, your passion around the environment, when did, you, when did you get that passion? I found that there were a lot of climate movements that were based not on fear, but on hope. And for me, that totally changed my mindset um, and made me feel like I was doing something that mattered. I was doing something that was possible. Um, and it definitely made it 
uh, made climate activism um, a much more enjoyable, passionate experience for me. And it, it took a little while for me to realize that like I was doing something that I was passionate about and then realizing that maybe I was passionate about it for a reason that wasn't useful and kind of changing that and becoming inspired by other people's stories. Um, I think that was really amazing for me. So I'd love to, to almost like close our eyes now and imagine a world where everyone is, is plugging into this kind of transformative passion of like this, this purpose um, through this time of like reprioritizing and having this break. How do you picture best case scenario once this is over and, and um, imagine everyone is like engaging into this, this purpose for their life. How do you imagine this would look best case scenario for like how people treat them themselves and their approach to life for themselves, for each other and for the planet around them? I personally am imagining a much more equitable and sustainable future. Um, if, if everybody is kind of figuring out, um, is confronted with all of these problems, um, in the world and in society, um, and also all of this time to kind of think about and consider solutions to them. Um, I hope that coming out of this, people realize oh, that a lot of these problems are easily fixable and that we can, you know, figure out the social justice problems within our healthcare system and within like our school system, as well as like also changing perhaps our measure of success. I think a lot of people are feeling useless right now um, and paralyzed and re-exploring what it means to be successful and to be unique um, and really figuring out those passions hopefully will carry people through this time and into the future where those can be valued as well. I was incredibly impressed by how quickly the world community came together to manufacture ventilators and masks and oxygen concentrators and such. And that's amazing. And that is what is possible when there's leadership and focus. So one of the things I'm, I'm hopeful for is that the tools, the digital tools to connect people and allow them to do stuff across the globe in unison are going to become stronger, reinforced and that rather than just having social networks that are, are about fun social chatting and so forth, where there will be a layer of purpose on top of these, where if I'm clear about wanting to do something in the environment or something in healthcare or something, I can identify those individuals who share that common interest and then and go and make a difference. With the Social Good Club, where I've been facilitating some of these conversations with other content creators, but also audience members, we had a really cool Zoom call like this um, last week where there was maybe 10, 15 audience members from all around the world, from India, Nepal. And there was a girl, Vanessa, from Tanzania, who was calling in. Uh, she was an entrepreneur. She had a young child with her and she was in the middle of a blackout uh, mm. where there was no electricity, but she was calling in. And we were talking about how we're doing, but also about solutions. How do we globally team together? And I think if we can, like you said, Peter, like find, take this as a time where we can collectively team up as a planet against this co common enemy of, you know, the virus and realize, you know, there's, th I feel like this could be a catalyst for us to band together, unite as a planet to, to do more and find solutions. And I think when people plug into their passions, no matter what they are, um, even if they deem them as like, this isn't transforming the world, people operating from a place of passion is very contagious. Uh, even within my house with my housemates, like one of my friends here is like really passionate about bees and saving the bees and how they're such a key to the planet. And I love that passion. And, and that's contagious for me. Even if I don't then become as passionate about bees, I'm as, you know, I, I feel that that contagiousness of like wanting to find my own passion and it rubs off on you and and i think we can as as collectively we become more passionate and purposeful um i think we will yeah can and will see a transformation like driven from this personal passion that's driving us as well i am excited though to see like what comes out of this like what companies form and how things are done differently can i build on that one second mm -hmm. um which is 
for any entrepreneurs from high school to college to graduate school to miss your career, it's an amazing time now, right? Because uh, what I say is that a great problem, if you see a problem, can you flip it in your mind to an opportunity that you can create and solve, right? The world's biggest problems, the world's biggest business opportunities. Want to become a billionaire, help a billion people. That's sort of the mindset that I try and portray. So one of my problems that I had was I was so angry, so pissed off at the news media all the time. It's like death and dying and destruction 24 seven on the news. And your mindset is the most important thing that you have. And if you let all this negativity into your mindset, that will never create a positive life. And so I went out and I hired a team and I built, um, uh, built a platform. And Justine, I'd love to show it to you sometime. I think you'd enjoy it. Um, called Future Loop, and what we do is we we built a machine learning uh, algorithm that scans millions, tens, hundreds of millions of articles and scientific journals and social feeds, and it looks for positive sentiment about converging technologies, transforming industries. So it's the future of every single industry, from shoes to T-shirts to transportation, whatever the case might be. And we focused it now on COVID nineteen. So every day I get an email feed of all of the technologies being used to solve the pandemic, right? And it's just, um, it's like, holy cow, I had no idea how much was happening. And so that's just one example of if you find something you're not happy with, solve it, create something new. So anyway, that's my rant. That's so true. And, it, and it's interesting though, because I think that first week when all of this happened, I was just reading the news. I was on Twitter refreshing and that just put my mindset just off on the wrong path. So like that next week I had to work so hard to just actively not check the news, but yeah. also get enough news to know what's happening, especially in Los Angeles. Like, are we allowed to go out? What are the dates? When is everything switched? If we can reimagine, and it sounds like you are, this, this new way of consuming news, which doesn't invoke fear. And I think when there's fear, there's panic. I think we sometimes disconnect with our logical mind and we operate out of this survival instinct. I think it's important to acknowledge facts situations the reality of what's going on but then i think if we're constantly living out of that fear i think it stifles a creative thinking it stifles a solution-based stuff it stifles our our hope and imagination and it's just keeping us uh living in a in a survival mode which can often be quite a selfish place to live but if we're living out of a compassionate place for others and the planet because we're not just in this like pure survival mode where it's just what how can i do what can i do to save me and my immediate family it's like bigger picture stuff so yeah i think if we can come out of this personally choosing to shift the way that we consume media and having the option to do that would be really powerful i think it could completely shift the way we perceive the world and the way we think about the future so th there is this feeling of i need to be doing a lot for myself and i'm feeling all this fear but i've also been noticing that there's this shift towards not just thinking about yourself um, and considering, you know, maybe the greater good of your community or the people who are on the front lines of this crisis, um, as opposed to just staying stuck in your, your own little, like, in your own little bubble. I think there, there is a weird combination of both where people are feeling, you know, very hemmed in by the news, um, but also like, taking a moment to look around them and see that they live in close proximity to other people who might also be affected by this. People do what's in their best, what's easier, faster, and cheaper for them. So this is where entrepreneurs create means that are cheaper, faster, and better. And when solar energy is, is monetizing in price, I wish people would get more environmentally conscious of not using diesel and, and uh, in natural gas, but they will do it when solar is just that much cheaper and we're getting there. When this finally, this, this lockdown relieves and we hit the resume button to our lives or probably more like a restart button, this reset that we're going through, what, what is each of you most excited uh, to do that we're, you know, you're currently unable to do? I'd love to hear some thoughts of like, what's, the, what's some of the first things you could be doing? 
Well, this is kind of piggybacking off of what we were talking about before, but yeah. how important it is to wash your hands and uh, being sanitary because I go to so many events and it's like mm-hmm. you go to CES, you know you're probably going to get sick because people aren't taking those precautionary measures. So I feel like this is such an eye-opening thing for people. I, like you have to wash your hands. You have to do all this stuff because you're passing on all of this stuff at all of these events. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how live events are changing and shifting. Like, are we going to have as many? Are businesses and companies realizing they can reach more people online with such less cost to put on those events? But man, I'm just excited to go on a hike. Like, I cannot wait to go outside and just just be back outside hiking, going back to group yoga classes and hanging out with my friends. And man, I'll even sit in traffic. Like, I'm ready for it. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Anjali? I think um, I'm excited to see, there's a lot of momentum right now that I've seen with like people wanting to help one another um, in, in smaller communities. And I'm excited to see where that momentum is moved to going forward. You know, will people start shifting this uh, desire to help people buy groceries into a desire to help people, you know, create a, a more sustainable like living or lifestyle. Um, I'm also excited, I think for me, organizing um, and you know doing a lot of protests and strikes uh, is, is very difficult to do online. Obviously Earth Day Live um, and a lot of local live streams are happening, but there is this display of the power of people and the power of democracy that's very difficult to accomplish virtually. Um, and I'm really excited to see a resurgence of that like public display of people power. I am a hugger. <laughs> Same. And I hug everybody. Me too. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm like ready to start hugging my friends again. <laughs> Everything that we're doing and our behavior patterns affects other people. So I'm hoping out of this, that we think about that. Like we think about that all of our actions have repercussions and whether it's not washing our hands and making other people sick or whether it's us, you know, the thing, the consumerism and the supply chains of what we're doing and the, and the behavior we're doing every day, how it's impacting our communities and feeding into inequality or damage to the planet. I think this could be a really big wake up call of like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, if I'm now starting to think about my small actions I'm doing and how the, re- you know, the repercussions they have, I think uh, I'm just excited to see people maybe apply that same logic to other parts of their life. Has anyone got any closing thoughts before we wrap up? This pandemic has exposed all of the environmental, economic, uh, health problems that were inherent in the structure that hopefully we will fix and have again because there will be other pandemics and hopefully we will be ready to address them much more efficiently and easier next time. So I'm hopeful about that. I'm hopeful about a positive impact of the environment. I'm hopeful about the new companies and ideas and technologies that can be created out of all of this that will make, allow us to live healthier, better lives. So there's lots of reasons to be hopeful and even optimistic on the backside of this when something like this kind of opens our eyes, it makes you reassess your priorities and just, it completely changes everything. So I just, I feel for so many people and if there's anything that any of us can do to help, you know, I think that's great because we are in a position to do that. This has shown that there are a lot of problems in our society, but also it has shown how resilient our communities can be um, and the people in those communities can be. Um, So I just want to recommend to anybody who's watching this, if you haven't already, like reach out to the people who are closest to you um, and make sure that they're okay and see how you can support them because the best way to get through this is to get through this together Um, because we are all isolated by ourselves in our houses, but that doesn't mean that we're alone. Um, And I think that's a mindset that a lot of people are getting caught in. Um, but just being aware that, you know, everybody else is feeling something in regard to this. Um, and we all like have to work together to fix it. Um, and that's just something that I want to remind everyone about. Amazing. And I think that's a, a great note to end on. So thanks for being a part of this conversation. Thanks for watching from home. 
and it's been great to be a part of this Earth Day live stream. And yeah, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. That conversation was amazing. It's exciting to talk to passionate people and be inspired that if we all act out of a place of purpose, we can face anything as a global community.